Everyone can spend a bunch of money getting some decent bottles at the store. But what happens when you go to the store and buy the five cheapest bottles of whiskey that they sell mm. and rank them blind? If you want to find out, stick around. I'm scared. Time for a little bit of a disclaimer. Okay. So first of all, guys, I only went to one store. So there may be some other cheap whiskeys out there that you come across that are not represented in this list. It's just a little social experiment. Was okay. it was it the Kona though? Um, no, no, it was. A, I went to Goody Goody. Oh, an actual liquor store. Actual liquor. Well, I wanted somebody that had a pretty wide selection, so I'd get a a, a good cross section of what the inexpensive stuff was, right? Cool. Um, and the whiskeys that made the list were literally the cheapest. There was no other criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so I, it took me a while because they had a lot of products, but I walked back and forth and made sure I bought the five cheapest bottles that there were at a 750 ml size. Does it have okay. the prettiest label? Um, there was nothing about label uh, that came into this. So the products are Benchmark Old Number 8, uh, Brand Bourbon. It, wait. Yeah, that's it. It's called Brand Bourbon? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. Benchmark Old Number 8. Uh, brand bourbon. Brand yeah. bourbon. All right. It's yeah. distilled by Buffalo Trace, aged 36 months. Ooh. It is a straight little bourbon. Infant. A little infant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's baby. Whiskey. Yeah, but over two years, so it can be a straight as long as there's an age statement. And there is. Yes. Um, and it is 80 proof. And the cost was, drum roll please, $9.99 for a $7.50. <laughs> oh, yes. And it is notable that it is sold in a plastic bottle with a screw top. So. Sick. Uh, number two was Henry McKenna bourbon, which is not the Henry McKenna 10 year that everybody loves. Uh, this is their lower end stuff. It is distilled by Heaven Hill, also aged for 36 months. Mm -hmm. It is also straight, also 80 proof. And the price is. Ten ninety nine for seven hundred fifty. The price is right. Come on down. And this one had a glass bottle, which surprised me because okay. glass costs more than plastic. Mm. Um, and probably the difference between the price of the uh, benchmark and the Henry McKenna was the fact that the bottle's glass. Uh, so number wow. three is Old Crow, distilled by Jim Beam, aged at least thirty six months. Uh, so maybe there's something in there that's older. It is also straight eighty proof. And the price is? You're lucky I'm a drummer. <coughs> Damn it. You just choked you up with that drum roll. It's so legit. Every time. And the price is? 11.49 for a 750 ml. And the bottle is also plastic. Mm. Uh, and the number four product is Early Times Whiskey. Okay. Not a bourbon. Really? Yeah. Just early times whiskey, Just not whiskey. a bourbon. It took me a second to figure that out. Whiskey. Whiskey. It is owned by Sazerac, uh, but it's likely still brown form and distillate because they bought the brand recently. Mm -hmm. They also bought all of the aging material. Uh, it is aged at least 36 months in used barrels. Oh, that's mm. why. That's, that's why. why it is not bourbon. That's a bourbon no-no. It's a bourbon no-no. It's just American whiskey. Uh, it is not a straight because it cannot be. It is also 80 proof. And it is the most expensive oh, wow. Wow. of the uh, the Legacy Distillery whiskeys, which were all straight, which were all bourbon. Uh, this one, not straight, uh, not technically bourbon. And it is priced at Eleven ninety nine for a seven. Those used ML. barrels are expensive. Man. Yeah, it's like what's going. What are you doing, Heather? What are you doing? Find yeah. some. Also a plastic bottle. Find some deals out there. Um, and then we've got kind of the outlier. Um, and again, uh, we did this strictly based on price. And this was the cheapest whiskey that was on the shelves. It is called. Mm. Henderson Vanilla Flavored Whiskey. Oh, Wes Henderson? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, and it is, and I quote, crafted mm. by the Hendersons. Uh, there is no age statement. It is class 641, so it is not whiskey at all. Mm. Um, in fact, it could be pretty much anything. It is also 80 proof. And it is priced at $8.99 for a 750. 
And it's glass too. In a glass bottle. Oh. Wow. There, I need. We need to get a hold of there. With a yeah. synthetic cork. They're sourcing. I need to call their department. manufacturer. So everyone else was screw top except for the Henderson. And so the, the Henderson was the cheapest. Had a synthetic cork and it's a glass bottle. Wow. But it is. Oh, kudos good. to you, Hendersons. Yeah. So that's what we're dealing with. Uh, All right. Chrissy Lynn has poured us blind. Thank you, Chrissy. And so we are going to uh, rank these up individually. Please keep your notes to yourself so that we do not influence mm. each other. No peeking. And then uh, we are going to reveal the results. Did you know that bourbon can only be made in Kentucky? False. Huh. Truth is, bourbon can be made in any state in the United States. Well, did you know that good bourbon is only made in Kentucky? False again. Have you tried Still Austin? What's Still Austin? How'd you do that? Don't worry about it. Still Austin is a little bit different than others. First of all, they use heirloom grains. All of them are sourced from the state of Texas, which is gonna create biodiversity, but it's also gonna throw off some flavors that are a little bit more bold than what you're used to from the commodity grains from Kentucky. And two, they use a column still. A lot of people have had negative experiences with Texas bourbon because it came off of a pot still and it throws off flavors that they're not used to. So you end up with a flavor that's bold enough to be considered a Texas whiskey, but not so off profile that if you're used to Kentucky, you're not gonna like it. So everything really is bigger in Texas. True, everything is bigger in Texas, Wes. Yes. Still Austin, Bourbon Real Talk approved. To have a bottle shipped to your door or find a retailer, click the link in the video description. So without right. further ado, let's taste. I'm a little nervous. Are you? To be honest with you. Some of these we don't, like that last one you said, we don't even know what it is. Uh, or yes. classic 640, class mm -hmm. 641. Vanilla yeah. whiskey. It I mean, be, it sounds yummy. It could be anything in there. Yeah. Okay, found it. Uh, <laughs> okay, found it. It was hilarious because when I was buying these whiskeys, um, I, I told... <laughs> Yes. Really <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I was buying these whiskeys. I told the the woman ringing me up what I was doing, and she's like, "Oh, what do you think?" And I was like, "Well, there's one that's gonna stick out like a sore thumb, because <laughs> most of these should taste about like water." Wow. <laughs> Boom, just coming like a wrecking ball. Coming like a wrecking ball. You forgot to tail off at the end. I, I'm it's not. A ball. Oh, I don't. Right there. You want to do it again? <laughs> yeah. All right. We're coming like a wrecking ball. There you, you go. It. You nailed it. Ah, crushed it. If I went to a guy's house, okay, and he was like, oh, do you want a whiskey? And I'm like, yeah. What you got? And what you like, got? And he's like, I have any of these. And he poured it for me. I, I would just drink and enjoy it. It's like, oh, it's not offensive. Too. There's nothing bad about it, which, which is kind of the point that I wanted to make, right? Because recently we've had a handful of people get on the podcast in the comments mm. and they'll go, yeah, whatever. Somebody went off on Wild Turkey 101 the other day. And they're like, Wild Turkey 101, you know, tastes like garbage. And I was like, buddy, there's not a legacy distillery in Kentex in, in Kentucky in, in Kentucky. In in Texas. There's not a legacy distillery in Kentucky that makes a product that tastes like garbage. That, that it now, are there some you're gonna perform? more than others for sure absolutely yes. that's fine there's stuff that you prefer over or maybe it has a note that like is off-putting to you and you know but does it taste like garbage no no none of them do uh it, it, am i gonna stock these on my shelves no no i'm not gonna stock these uh but there are some that i that i don't mind yeah 
Uh, I actually think the vanilla thing's kind of cool. It's fun. It's a lot of vanilla, but it's just kind of a novelty thing. Where sure, yeah. Like, like I, you feel like you're tasting like a dessert of some sort. Yeah, like I'd have this with ice cream or something. Right. I, I mean, it'd be awesome in a cocktail with the right what bitters and the right like. What if you made some ice cream out of this? That would be pretty cool. <gasps> yeah. Like if you put them up against all the other flavored whiskeys, uh -huh. I like it. Okay, that's fair. I mean, it's, I just like I just like the tasting experience. Okay. That's no, I'm I'm not mad about it. All right, let's let's hear the reveal, all uh, right. Chrissy. Uh, let's start on this side and go this way. First one? Uh-huh. Benchmark. Benchmark. Nice! Wow, okay. I thought I would put benchmark up a little higher, honestly. I like that. All right, cool. All right. What's the second one? Old Crow. Old Crow. Old, we like that Old Crow, don't we? That was my uh, number one. Me and too. Your number one. Yeah. Okay, I didn't like McKenna. All right, that was my number two. Early times. Mm -hmm. That was my number three. And, and that was my fifth place. Wait, is the label? Is that a picky blender? Right? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> We've got lots of bloopers on this. One. Yeah, we do. Is it's, that the picky blender? Is that picky blenders? blenders? The notorious know. bootlegger. Dude, I love it even more. <laughs> it does, I mean, it, it looks like it, right? I don't know. It's it's you know. It look, it's it's. I mean, it looks Peaky Blinderish. Every sinner needs a saint. Yeah. So, I yeah. love Henderson. Yeah. Well, you know, when you read it, it's like it's all BS marketing and whatnot. Like you don't even know what it is. It's it's basically, from what I can tell, a whiskey flavored vodka that they put vanilla in. Okay. Um, yeah. But whatever, uh, it tasted good. So if this is your first time watching the show, we'd like to let you know that if you enjoy this content, we have a higher level of opportunity for you mm -hmm. at patreon.com, Bourbon Real Talk Plus. We oh, have yeah. behind the scenes, we've got single barrel selections coming up, we've got all kinds of bonus content, in-person opportunities to get together, online opportunities to get together. And we would really appreciate the support. We've got a lot of great things going on and we couldn't do it without the support of people like you. Um, and also we'd like to tell you about our general philosophy of our show. And that is that we want to help bring people together through bourbon. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's personally important to us because I lost a loved one to suicide in 2014. And I was looking for ways to bring people together so that they felt a sense of community and purpose that my brother didn't feel when he made the decision to take his life. And I saw how whiskey was bringing people together from all different walks of life. And it made me think maybe if I could get you connected to whiskey, the whiskey would do the rest, rest of the job and get you connected to others so that you didn't feel that way, so that you knew that there were people that lo were looking for you to be there tomorrow. And along that path, I did also um, see the negative side of online enthusiast communities because there are trolls out there and they will you know, try and ruin your good time, but they show a lot of hate to strangers online. And it made me realize that one, we needed a community where there wasn't hate. And that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk community on Facebook. Uh, but it also made me realize that if those people can hate you online, even though they don't really know you, there's nothing that keeps me from loving you online, even though I don't really know you. And that's why we end every show the same way. And that's this. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know yeah, that we, we love, love you. you. And we'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Cheers. Cheers to him. Action. Boom. Jackson or something. Go! Go! Chia Whoa. pet. You ever seen a chia pet grow wimps? No, I haven't. I've never had the patience for it. Faster! Just kidding, I don't know. Alright, ready? Are you ready? Are she, you ready? She looks ready. I don't know. She's ready. Chrissy Lynn, off camera. What are you gonna do? Built for this. She's, she's amazing. That's your new name. She's built for tough. Built for tough. <laughs> she has a Ford hat on. Uh, Alright, let's see. Hey, nice hat. Hey, thanks. Nice lanyard. Nice rocks glass. Thanks, man. <laughs> nice travel case. Nice blend topper. Thank you. Nice candle. Nice bottle bag. Thanks, man. That's a nice tumbler. Nice woman's t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Nice uh, extra schmedium shirt.
Get yourself some nice things and get all the compliments that come along with it. Shop bourbonrealtalk.com. A whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary, <laughs> idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.